may please be seated. I welcome you to the month of February, and I'm believing God that February will be a thousand times better for you than January in the name of Jesus. Can you please join me? Let us appreciate and celebrate the choir. That was a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful time in God's presence. Glory be to God. I'm aware many have joined us virtually. One more time, please. Just appreciate God as we welcome the virtual church. Glory be to God. Our theme for this new month, the month of February, says, Now I see. <laughs> now I see. Now I see. Now I see. Very soon you will understand. But let's go into it. The sermon um, is titled, No Condition is Permanent. <laughs> No condition is permanent. Our te text is John chapter 9, 22 to 25. John 9, 22 to 25. His parents said these things because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that he was Christ, he would be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he's of age, ask him. So they again called the man who was blind and said to him, Give God the glory. We know this man is a sinner. He answered and said, Whether he's a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see him. See where our theme is from? Beloved brethren, ladies and gentlemen, no condition is designed to be permanent. The only permanent thing is change. And because things aren't the way they were, things cannot stay the way they are. The only constant in life is change. Psalm 30 verse 5, the Bible says, For his anger endureth but a moment. In his favor is life. Weeping may endure for a night, but joy cometh in the morning. May I prophesy straight away to the life of somebody that your morning of joy has finally come. In the mighty name of Jesus. The man in our test was born blind. And when there was an argument, whether it was him or somebody else, he said, I'm the one. And so, how did it happen now? I told you, Jesus Christ picked up clay, spat on it, anointed my eyes, asked me to go and wash in Siloam. That was all I did. I came back saying, so, oh, no, 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 no. No, 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 it can't be Jesus. Don't you know him? He's a sinner. <laughs> the man said, well, whether I be a sinner or not, I don't know. One thing I know, I was blind, now I see. Him. Because no condition is permanent, the blind man could say, once I was blind, that was then, and now I see. That's why I know that the sick will soon say, once I was sick, but now I'm him. The poor will say, once I was poor, now I'm rich. Someone will say, once I was depressed, but now my joy is full. Oh, the single will soon say, once I was single, but now I'm married. Another person will say, once I was a borrower, and now I'm a lender. <clears throat> the barren will soon say, once I was barren, but now I'm fruitful. The bound will soon say, once I was bound by the chain of Satan, but now I'm delivered. Praise the Lord. The spiritually dead will soon say, once I was dead, but now I'm alive. Will somebody shout a really big hallelujah? The one who will soon testify, for the one who will soon testify, there are a few points to note. In fact, three of them, and I will be done. Number one, against hope, believe in hope. Against hope, believe in hope. The man born blind has always been in darkness. Always. He never saw light. But as soon as the Lord asked him to go and wash in Siloam, 
the hope of sin pushed him to obey. Somehow this man must have been thinking that I'm sure this permanent, this condition cannot be permanent because it made no sense when a, a man you never met before just, you know, appeared and said, young man, come here, you are born blind, wait there, put up a clay, spat on it, anoint your eyes, go and, go and wash, and you'll come back saying, it must be that this man has been hoping that a day is coming when this condition will change. I'm believing God with you that that painful situation you are in now will change very, very soon. Yeah. Let your amen be a, a resounding amen. The secret of Abraham is believing in hope against hope. Romans 4 verse 18. Romans 4 verse 18. Who against hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations according to that which was spoken. So shall I seed be. A man who has not a single child. And God saying to him, you are going to be father of many nations. I mean, that must have been a joke. That was against all hope. But the Bible says, Abraham believed in hope against all hope. It doesn't matter how bad that situation is. Even if it is hopelessly hopeless, believe in hope. I had only two quiet amen. amen. The change is around the corner. Say so the change is around the corner. Amen. And you will not miss it in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. Job in his multiple sorrows believed in hope against hope. In Job 14 verse 7, Job 14 verse 7, listen to Job. He said, for there is a hope of a tree. If it be cut down, that will sprout again. And that the tender branch thereof will not cease. Those that think it is over for you, they are about to get the biggest surprise. Because you will rise again. Say, so you are going to rise again in the name of Jesus. Listen to me. Whatever you have lost, you can have back. But when you lose hope, you have lost all. I mean, you know that I love soccer like anything. I mean, I mean, I started playing soccer from a very young age. The Cameroonian national team, only yesterday, there were three goals down against Burkina Faso. They were the host country. The nation was quiet at the stadium. I mean, the, the, the reserve on the bench were sorrowful. That was bad we lost in the semifinal. Be in our own country to Burkina Faso. This is indomitable lions of, of Cameroon. How can this happen to us? How can this befall us? But then before you know it, Cameroon came back 3-1, 3-2, 3-3. They went into penalty shootouts and Cameroon won the game. Oh, you are rising up again. So you are coming back again. I said, those who, oh, look, listen to me. Don't listen to anyone that thinks it's over for you. They might come to you and say, this case is too bad. They might say to you, this cannot happen. But God is about to change the story. In the name of Jesus. And they that bow down their head for most part of the time began to dance everywhere. Everybody, I mean, look, the fans were, were about booing them. Who, who, the moment they came back, 3-1, 3-2, 3-3, and they won. The same fan who said, oh, who, what kind of players are these on, this, on the social media? They have started saying that that fellow who did this, we are going to go and burn his house. That guy who couldn't score the goal, we are going to... The moment they won the game, ah, they began to say, wow, there's no player, no player like these people. Those who have written you off, they will jump up on your behalf again and begin to testify. Can I hear somebody really roar and loud hallelujah? Glory be to God. Hope, hope paints the picture of the future you treasure. Hope paints the picture of the, of the future you treasure. Wake up in the morning with hope. And, and, and envision the future that you treasure. And you begin to see the walk in your direction. Because the change you desire is about to happen. It will be so in the mighty name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Hope pr provides the energy. The energy for the better days ahead. 
Hope creates expectation, builds excitement, and delivers the blessing. Look at your child and, and look at the glorious future. You know, look at him and say, wow, I see you, I see you in the White House. You know, I, I see you as the CEO of, of a very big company. I see you doing great things in life. Oh, don't look at today, look at the future. Because things will change even for that child. In the name of Jesus, things may not be working right now, but something's about to change. Something's about to change. It will about to change for your good. You will testify still in the name of Jesus. I am excited this morning. I am confident in God that you will not remain the same like this you will get better and better and better until you reach that desired goal in the name of Jesus. Glory be to God. Believe in hope against hope and see darkness turn to light. Glory be to God. Number two, wait on God until the change comes. The only option that leads to a positive change is to wait on God. Other options are dangerous. This man born blind could have gone for a suicide. He could have said, what kind of God is this? He could have cursed God, like Job's wife said to Job, say, curse God and die. You know, what did I do to God? I mean, why would I be born without eyes? Could have been suffering from depression, but he was waiting. So when that day came, when that day came, as your day is about to come, he embraced it. Listen, Job, Job opened our eyes to the secret of change as a four-letter word called wait. Job 14, verse 14. Job 14, verse 14. If a man die, shall he live again? All the days of my appointed time, will I wait? Till my change comes. Somebody's change is about to come. Good waiters enjoy good tips. Bad waiters may go with nothing. Be a good waiter. Because good waiters... Enjoy good tips. And if God is the one tipping you, oh my God. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. If God is the one tipping you, you can be sure. Oh, God is about to give somebody a blessing. In the name of Jesus. That's why I love the song. God is able to do just what he said he will do. He's going to fulfill every promise to you. Don't give up on God because he won't give up on you. He's able and he's able. Waiting on God guarantees the blessings you await. Waiting on God guarantees the blessings you await. Finally, number three. Be willing to give all the glory to the Lord Jesus. There was a terrible pressure on both the parents and this man born blind never to give the glory to the Lord. I mean, you read the story, John chapter 9, begin from maybe verse 20. They asked the, the parents, they said, what? is this your son? Was he born blind? By what means has he been blind? They knew that, hmm, these people, they want to throw us out of the synagogue. His parents answered them and said, we know that this is our son. That we know. And that he was born blind, we also know. But by what means he now sees, mm, we do not know. Or who opened his eyes, we do not know. However, he is of age. Ask him. He will speak for himself. His parents said these things before, because they feared the Jews. For the Jews had agreed already that if anyone confessed that it was Christ who opened his eyes, he will be put out of the synagogue. Therefore, his parents said, he is of age. Ask him. But see, the pressure of the Jews could not stop this man, born blind, from testifying. Because when they came to him, in John 9, 25, he answered and said, whether he's a sinner or not, I do not know. One thing I know, that though I was blind, now I see. In verse 26, I love this man. In verse 26, then they said to him again, 
what did he do to you? How did he open your eyes? I love this guy. In verse 27, you know, this man went ahead. He answered them, I told you already, and you did not listen. <laughs> Why do you want to hear it again? Do you also want to, because he began to preach to them. Do you want to give your life to him? Do you want to give your life to him? Why do you want to hear it again? Verse 28, verse 28, verse 28. Then they reviled him and said, you are a disciple, but we are Moses' disciple. Too bad for them. Glory. Come on, let's give the Lord a big hand. I'm just so excited this morning. Glory, glory be to God. The man born blind was a grateful man in small things. And he was, he was qualified for bigger things. That was not the first time that man would be, would be, would be, would be testifying. See, if you are grateful for your condition, that's why he didn't commit suicide all this while. That's why you didn't see him somewhere depressed or, or anything like that. He was grateful for the little things. You know, he wasn't even praying at the point Jesus saw him. The blind Bartimaeus was shouting, Jesus, thou son of David, have mercy on me. But for this man, they just saw him and they started discussing him. When you are grateful, blessings will come to you. If you are not grateful for small things, you are disqualified from the bigger things. Many are shy to testify of the goodness of God and to return to say thank you, Jesus. Many are proud. They are too arrogant to share how bad things have been, how bad things have been for them. Before Jesus turned things around, ah, if I were to go and tell them that that happened to me, they would be looking at me somehow. Many are afraid of what men will say if they knew their past and so they deny the Lord the glory he deserves. The ingrates are limited in the blessings available to them. In, jo in Luke 17, verse 17, Luke 17, 17, Jesus answering said, were there not ten, talking about the ten lepers, ten cleansed, but where are the nine? They are not found, they are returned to give glory to God, save this stranger. And he said unto him, Arise, go thy way, thy faith had made thee whole. The others were cleansed of their leprosy, but they were not made whole. Only the man who came back, he was, he was healed and he was made whole. You limit the level of your blessing as you deny God the glory. Thank God for the blessings of yesterday and you will be on the list of candidates for today's blessing. Jesus is the controller of times and seasons and only him can change the situation of man. Jesus is the unchanging changer. Daniel 2, 20 to 21, Daniel answered and said, Blessed be the name of God forever and ever, for wisdom and might are his, and he changes the times and the seasons. No condition is permanent. But you know, it can be good news. It can be bad news. When you allow Jesus, the only one who brings changes to times and seasons into your life, the bad becomes the good. Things can move from bad to worse when you refuse Jesus access to your life. And things can even move from what looks good to bad and to, to, even to worse when Christ is denied access into your life. Nebuchadnezzar was enjoying the palace. Things were good, but he will not give glory to God. He will not allow God access into the palace and into his life. And things never remained the same with him. He changed and became an animal. When you say no condition is permanent, it can be good news. It can be bad news. At that time, it was a bad news for Nebuchadnezzar. But somehow, in that terrible state of ease, he acknowledged God. He praised God. And God changed things again because no condition is permanent. And he turned back from being an animal back to the throne. Nobody even tampered with his throne. The only one who can go from good to bad, bad to worse, is the one who shut the door at Jesus. Say, Jesus, I don't need you. Then you can be sure no condition is permanent. But for that person, it is from good to bad to worse. But you allow Jesus into the situation, oh, when we say no condition is permanent, every good thing you desire begins to come to you. 
If you receive it, rise up and shout another hallelujah. hallelujah. Glory be to God. Lift your hand now. Thank him in what looks like small things. That you can make it to church this morning. Thank him. Thank him that you can make it to church this morning. Thank him. Thank him that you are in church this morning. Give him praise. Give him praise. Thank him that you are in church. Thank him that you can lift your hands. Thank him for roof over your head. Thank you that you have a cloth to wear. Thank you that you are not barefooted. Thank him for the things we take for granted. Thank him for those things. Thank him. Thank him for those things. To God be the glory. Great, Great things he has done. So much he And say, Father, give me a miracle to testify about this month. Oh, yeah, give me a miracle to something to testify about. So I too can say, once things were not working, now things are working. We can say, once I was sick, but now I'm healed. Give me something, something to testify about. Oh, once things have been working, but now they work better. Something to rejoice about. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, if you listen to this message and you have not allowed Jesus into your life, it is when Jesus comes in that things begin to change for the better. So I want to welcome you to surrender to him. What a great time to do so. Whether you are virtual or you are here, just raise your hand up and say this simple prayer. Lord Jesus, save my soul. I believe in my heart. I confess with my mouth that you are the savior of mankind. I repent of my sins. I confess them, repent of them, and I forsake my, my evil ways. Just help me, Lord, from now. I'm born again. I surrender unto you. If you pray the prayer very sincerely and very genuinely, then you are born again. We just want you to reach out to us on the numbers on your screen and the contact details, and then we'll continue to pray for you as we reach out to you. Father in heaven, as many who are saying yes to you now, letting you in into their heart, into their lives, please save their souls, O oh God. Let things begin to work for their good in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. For every one of us this month in particular, give us something to testify about. Something that will make our joy to be full. Give to us this month in the name of Jesus. And we promise we shall return to testify. Thank you, Heavenly Father, because it is done. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Now, if you receive your own, go ahead one more time and give the Lord a really, 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 really big clap of praise. And then you may be seated. Glory be to God.